Hey everyone, it's Heather with Tiller Money here. I want to talk through a quick workflow on using the Basic Bank CSV option in the CSV line item importer from Tiller Money Labs. Oftentimes folks have some accounts or institutions that are not supported for automated feeds. Since we can only pull about 60 days worth of transaction data for your accounts, you might want to get some more historical information into your transaction sheet. First things first, uh, you're going to need to export a CSV from your bank that has the data that you're trying to import and get it into your properly formatted Tiller Money Power Google Sheet transaction sheet. And so I've already done that step. I'm not going to demo that step. My Google Drive here, just drive.google.com for the account that I use for Tiller Money. Here's that Chase CSV that I downloaded from Chase. I'm just going to go ahead and drag that into my Google Drive here. It's going to upload and then the cool thing about CSVs when you put them in your Google Drive, you can open them with Google Sheets. So I'm going to go ahead and open it with Google Sheets here. The other thing I'm going to do is in the topic here in the community, there as well as in the labs add-on itself, there's a link to a template for the basic bank import. So that's the, the format that you're gonna need to use to import your transaction data. I'm gonna just copy this link and in my test account here, uh, when I open this link, I'm gonna notice that it's view only and that's intentional. So if you're following along with these steps, you're gonna want to make a copy of this and this is gonna be your copy that you're gonna use for prepping your data. And you can use the same one for all of your accounts. I'm gonna copy the URL of this because I really wanna get this Chase CSV data into this uh, template sheet because I want to record the macro in this template sheet. The thing about macros in Google Sheets is that they are specific to the Google Sheet. So that's why we're gonna use this as our prep sheet, our template that we're gonna use every time you need to transform the data. Now that I've copied the URL, I can head back over to the CSV that I opened in Google Sheets from Chase. I can just click this little down arrow, choose copy to existing spreadsheet. I'm gonna paste the URL in here and then it's gonna copy that over successfully for me. So now I see a new tab here in my, in my, my basic bank um, import template. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get this, uh, we're going to record the macro to remove the columns that we don't need and make any changes to any column headers to make sure that they match what's required in this transaction prep here. But to record a macro in Google Sheets, you go to Tools, Macros, and then Record Macro. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the transaction date to date because that is one of the required columns. So I'll just say date and then it's going to record that. You can see it set that value for me. I'm actually going to delete the post date column because I really just care about the transaction date. I'm also going to delete the category column because I don't want to use Chase's categories. They're probably not going to line up with the categories I have in my Tiller Money Power Google Sheet. So I would rather just delete that. So I'm going to delete that column as well. I'm also going to delete this type column. There are some circumstances where a transaction type column may be useful and you do need it um, and you may need to do some other transforming which you can also train the macro to do for you uh, and i have that documented in that community article i'm not going to uh, i'm not going to demo that in this video but if it were to say credit or debit and then you see your values here are just absolute values they don't have these negative signs there's some help over on that community topic about how to deal with those the reason this is a basic bank import is because banks, the CSVs that you generate from them are various. And that's why we're showing you the steps of how to transform them to, to be in the basic bank uh, CSV format. So back to deleting this column, I'm going to go ahead and delete column. And then everything else looks good to me here. So I really just need to make sure that I've had the headers correct. Okay, so then the next thing I'll do is I'm going to just select, I'm holding the shift key, selecting all three of these columns. I'm going to copy them. And then in my transaction prep sheet, I ha it's, already, it's already ordered the correct way um, for my Chase CSV. So this is gonna be unique to your specific bank CSV. You may need to use the macro to record rearranging columns, but every time you export that CSV from your bank, it should be the same. So the recorded macro should be able to understand that it's moving things around in the right way. You're gonna move it around the same way every time. That's why the macro is really helpful. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and paste 
uh, special paste values only, and then you can see that I get that, that date, um, description, and amount information here on the uh, transaction prep sheet. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and save my macro, and, because that is the transform step that I really need to um, do with the macro. Everything else I'm just going to do in a few steps really manually. So I'll go ahead and save this. And I'm going to call it Chase because this is specific to my Chase Bank CSV. I may need to record these for other CSVs that I generate from different institutions that may have a different format. So just keep that in mind. So next we're going to set up the config sheet to allow us to populate the institution account number and account columns in this transaction prep sheet. And so we built this just to make it easy. This is assuming that you're doing one account at a time. Um, if you, you can feel free to customize this. These are just simple formulas that are referencing specific cells on that config sheet, the ones that have the drop-down menus for each of these uh, different columns. And so if you prefer not to use this, you can clear out the formulas. This is in every cell because it's going to be the same institution, same account number, and same account for all these transactions. This is just a way to quickly fill in that part of the data and give you some selection options. So on the config sheet, I can go ahead and set this up. The institutions list here is where I wanna list out the institutions that I may be using this workflow for. So this case is Chase. Maybe I have a Discover card that I wanna manually add some data for. You can list these out. You may wanna just double check against your Tiller Money powered Google Sheet and make sure that you're spelling things the same, the account numbers are formatted the same, stuff like that, just so it's consistent across um, both data sets. For the accounts, it's going to be my Amazon Prime Visa and the account number I think is formatted as XXXX5688, for example. Maybe this is um, classic Visa from Discover and the account number is XX1234. So now this is where I can select the account that I want to use on the transaction prep sheet. So you see I have both of those options. In this case, it's the Amazon Prime Visa. The institution is Chase and the account number is 5688. That is the account that I'm importing data for right now. So then you can see in my transaction prep sheet, I have all the data in those columns for all for really all of the rows. The importer will ignore the rows where this other information is blank, so it's fine that this you know, runs down farther than actual transaction data. So my last step here is to just now export this as a CSV. So I'll go to File and then Download and I'll choose uh, Comma Separated Values, CSV. It's going to download that onto my machine. Now I can go into my console here at sheets.tillerhq.com. So I've already got this basic CSV test sheet here. So let's just use that one for demo purposes. I can go ahead and launch the Tiller Money Labs add-on here. I'll go to Tools, Import CSV Line Items, and then I can choose Upload CSV File from today, 10.52 a.m. It's gonna analyze these line items for me, and I can even have it filtered the transactions after import. If it is, if I did have a lot of other transaction data in here and it's historical and I really just want to check out what uh, was imported on this import, I could do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and choose add to transaction sheet. And then you can see, voila, it added 46 transactions for me. I can see the descriptions. It fills in all the rest of the data. There's this metadata column letting me know uh, what type of CSV I imported. I get all the same data I would get from the money feed with the exception of the transaction ID column. There will be no transaction ID for these transactions since they were not generated by the Tiller Money systems. So those are the basics of using that basic bank CSV. Now just some tips on running the macro. You will want to probably do like a test run of it to just make sure that everything's working with how it was recorded. So back in my copy of the basic bank CSV, I'm just gonna go through those steps again. I'm gonna delete this one, which I'd already uh, formatted. I need to copy the URL of the import template. I'm gonna go back to my Chase CSV and then go to copy to existing spreadsheet, paste in the URL. Back in my import template, I'll see that that you know unformatted copy of the Chase transactions here. One last thing I want to do before I run the macro is just go ahead and clear out this uh, these three columns here with that existing transaction data. And it's fine that the headers are not in here because the macro is actually going to add the headers back in when it pastes that data back in. So 
in the CSV export from Chase uh, tab that's in my basic bank import template now, I'll go to tools, macros, and then I'll run the Chase macro here. The first time you run it, it's going to ask you to authorize the script, and this is just a script that's running locally in this particular Google Sheet, so it's safe to just go ahead and run that. Uh, so then I'll go back into the Tools menu again, and then choose Chase, and then we're going to see it do its magic. Now, I've seen this error before um, in the with the delete columns. It's really easy to fix in the script editor. So I'm glad I'm demoing this, making sure that you don't get stuck on this too. Um, so if you go into tools and then you go to macros, manage macros, you can edit or remove here. So I'm gonna go to edit script and then I can see the line where it's breaking. Um, and so all I need to do is just add, if you have the same experience, add a semicolon to the end and then just copy the same um, beginning section of the function or of this part of the function here before the dot delete columns and then just paste that into that row where it's missing and then save it and then I'm going to go ahead and close this just say cancel and then macros again go chase formatted everything for me put it right in the transaction prep sheet now I just have that step of choosing the accounts and then exporting it as a CSV. So I hope this video has been helpful and informative, a little bit about how to use macros, a little bit about how to more quickly prepare and format your data for use with that basic bank uh, CSV import option from the CSV line on importer in the Tiller Money Labs add-on. Please uh, reach out in the community if you have any questions about this workflow or video. Uh, happy to help you there.